Well, for more on this, we're joined by sports writer Nubias Wilborn and co-founder of ESPN's Atlanta Hawks blog called Hawks Hoop. He joins us now from Atlanta. Nubias, thanks for taking the time to speak with us. I understand you've had a chance to read the email that was sent. What was your initial reaction? Well, my initial reaction was a little bit of outrage, but then as I read it and really got into it, there were some factors of the email that had a bit of validity. I mean, starting with the fact that the majority of the post-game concerts were hip-hop or gospel. And when you look at the Hawks games, I mean, I grew up in Atlanta, and obviously I'm African-American, so me growing up in Atlanta, I didn't know it was abnormal for there to be a strong African-American president at games until I started covering the NBA and realizing that Atlanta was one of the few places where you saw such a strong black crowd. He mentioned D.C. in there, and he's right. When I go to a Wizards game, there is still a majority white crowd. Atlanta is definitely an anomaly in that. But the NBA in and of itself has been trying to get away from being known as a black league or an urban hip-hop league. And Atlanta in particular has really had issues with that. Because back in the 80s, in the Dominique Wilkins days, the crowd was majorly white, majorly affluent, and even more further, majority Jewish. They had a very strong base of being Hawks fans. And over the past 15 years, a lot of those fans have left. But they've also moved outside of the metro area where the arena still is, as opposed to the Braves, who are moving to Cobb County, where a lot of those people are. Yeah, Bias, this is interesting. So are, are you're saying that Levinson actually made some valid points in there. And, and what I found kind of fascinating is that he brought this email to the attention of the league himself. Why do you think Levinson is stepping down? Well, and, okay, let, you asked two questions. I'll start with the beginning. There were some valid points because there is an issue, there is a racial divide in Atlanta when it comes to sports. There are African-American fans who feel, starting back to Dominique Wilkins, all the way to Michael Vick, Ron Gant with the Braves, I can name names on and on where they feel that the African-American stars have not been respected. Even the Atlanta Thrashers, the hockey team, had a Vander Kane and a few other guys, and they had five African-American guys, and then that was the same year they left. So it's like every time a black star starts to emerge, there are people, African-American. Oh, I think we might have Whereas lost. Whereas white fans tend to feel that the team is kind of not being there for those fans. Mm -hmm. No, bias. I want to ask so you. Oh, I want to ask you quickly. Outside of the players, what I what I thought was different about Donald Sterling versus Bruce Levinson's comment is Donald Sterling seemed to be uh, taking aim at his players, whereas Bruce Levinson is really taking aim at his fans here, really saying that the value of a white fan is more more valuable than a black fan. How do you think this will affect the way fans see the NBA as an organization? Well, uh, it'll have a major effect. And also to answer your other question, Levinson's been trying to sell his stake in the Atlanta Hawks since 2011. Hmm. Um, in order for owner to sell out of the Atlanta Hawks, based upon the Atlanta Spirit Group's original agreement, he has, to, he has to get a vote from the other owners. He has failed to get that vote. He's been trying to sell. That's also part of the reason why the city of Atlanta lost the Thrashers, of course, and up there in lovely Winnipeg, Canada, which I won't go there. But... <laughs> You know, well, no offense to, to you guys. <laughs> but, um, and, you know, hey, Calgary, you know, we stole Calgary, so, hey, it happens. But um, what I was going to say, what may, really the issue is, is that black fans will buy season tickets. Look at the Atlanta Falcons. They do a great job of selling to black fans, catering to black fans. I think that they could sell black season tickets, and it will have an effect because the league is already having these issues. It's already had the Donald Sterling problem. It already had the former commissioner, Stern, pass a dress code where it forced players to no longer wear the gold chains and the earrings and those things of that nature to where they wanted them to be more dressed up because they were afraid of that hip-hop image. So it only furthers the divide, and it only furthers the divide in the city of Atlanta that's already shown that the divide is there, 
That's why I mentioned the Atlanta Braves moving to Cobb County instead of actually serving the inner city and keeping the Atlanta Braves in Atlanta as opposed to taking them out of the metro area. So, yeah, it'll have an effect, and it's going to be a negative effect. The question is, how will Steve Kunitz, um, the new CEO, the rest of the ownership group, and whoever they bring in, fix it? It can be fixed. There just has to be some honest conversations. And both sides, white and black, have to get over themselves and each other. Yeah, new bias, really interesting conversation of race in America, and it touches uh, in so many places. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. We really appreciate it. Hey, thanks, guys, for having me. That's new bias, Will Bourne, sports writer and co-founder of ESPN's Atlanta Hawks blog.